What's up guys, it's Zero Media here. In today's episode, hopefully we can finish the LS6 engine that we're playing together, a Beznik engine design with Pashko. Uh, as you can see, I'm already here at Beznik and there's no intro because I came straight from work to Beznik engine design to finish this thing up. What's up guys? Hey, Ishin up? here with Pashko, back at it again. We're gonna be building the LS6 engine. <laughs> In the last video, I was wearing fur flops, but today I'm wearing like dress shoes. Business casual because I came straight from work to Pashko's. I told him he couldn't come back unless he has shoes. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> but as you can see here, we put the timing chain on, the head is on. Um, Pashko did a nice job putting the valves and springs in, nice and ported, looking pretty. So I guess it's more of a cosmetic side, I guess, what we're putting in. Yeah, just the, you know, all the rockers, uh, push rods, mm -hmm. all that stuff. That's probably about the last mechanical thing in the oil pump. Right, <laughs> the right. Most important mechanical thing. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, and then the rest is just uh, covers, really. Cool. So we've got a whole bunch of gaskets and seals and rockers here, which I already upgraded with Trinian Upgrade Kit by Comp. And uh, I got here the Millions High Pressure Oil Pump. And other than that, it's pretty much, oh yeah, and then here you have the Improved Racing Oil Pan Baffle, so you can see this little flop, 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 so it can withstand uh, 50 Gs of cornering. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so we got another live stream going on YouTube here, actually, with my cell phone, using my DSLR as a camera mount. <laughs> and we're gonna start Poking down the head here. So, what are the torque specs or torque sequence? So, the torque sequence actually, there's uh, three or four steps. Um, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, if you remember uh, these two outer bolts here on, yeah. the, on the inside of the valve cover area, they were shorter, you know, shorter as compared right. to the rest of them. Right. So, basically, they all, all the inner bolts, all these long ones, the M11 uh, thread diameter, they get torqued to 22 pound feet uh, initially. Oh, okay, I was gonna say, okay, yeah. <laughs> initially. Yeah. And then these ones, uh, all the longer ones, will get torqued an additional 90 degrees. Okay. And then these medium length ones get torqued an additional 50 degrees. Okay. And then these small ones here get torqued at uh, 22 pound feet. Alright, so head is torqued and now we're off to push rods. Uh, it doesn't matter which way they go in, I'm a little particular. I like all the text going the same way, you know. <laughs> of course. It matters, so. um, I use this stuff, it's called CMD huh. um, Extreme a Pressure Lube. Extreme! Yep, it's a really nice uh, grease. Extreme lube, huh? Yeah, extreme, for extreme so cases. Extreme. <laughs> Push the lifter down, spin it around, get the grease going in there. So is that lube specifically meant for push rods or just? No, it's, I use it for a little bit of everything, you know, like connecting rod bolts, um, anything that has a high clamp force. Oh, you know, okay. Like cylinder head bolts that get torqued to ridiculous amounts. Right. Uh, this doesn't squish out like oil. All right, so the rocker arms are in, just hand tight right now, and we're talking it down to how many foot pounds? This is Or pounds feet? <laughs> 22. <laughs> 22 again, okay. Are we gonna see 22 pretty often on this engine build? So next up, we'll be installing the oil pump. This is a Mellings High Pressure Pump, 10295. If you have never seen inside oil pump before, it's just two rings that work. A slight offset, and it creates pressure, low pressure, high pressure, and just feeds the oil through.
See the center is it, but it also keeps the lip, uh, the seal lip, facing the correct direction. I see. Yeah, these seals can tend to be a little bit stiff. Okay. So it's hard to get them to ride on correctly. Okay. So this will center it on the crankshaft, and then when you slide it on, it just will run there nice and smooth. Nice. I would have probably destroyed it. <laughs> uh, another thing too with the mounting things on engine stands, I like to use spacers. And longer bolts that's why we have enough room to access the rear ah okay yeah. that makes sense so you don't have to take the engine off the stand put the cover on put it back on right yes yes i'll call you back so we're going to check side clearance on the rods mm -hmm. um, I know they're fine, but this is a process that uh, I want everybody to know, uh, make sure they do. It's probably one of the most commonly overlooked uh, clearances of uh, engine building for novice people, I would, I would say. Okay. Um, so what happens is with, you know, with side clearance, you know, there's a specified amount uh, of play between the connecting rod and the journal itself. Uh, if your clearance is too tight, Obviously, once heat starts being generated in the connector rod, the big end area, uh, the connector rod doesn't have any more room to expand. Mm -hmm. So it starts binding up the crankshaft. Uh, if it's too loose, you could have low oil pressure issues. Mm -hmm. um, if it's you know just flopping around there so loosely, uh, all the oil that gets fed to the rod just kind of flows past it. You know, there's nothing there to stop it. Okay. And uh, in extreme cases, I can show you something. All right, check it out. So this is a very extreme case of not checking side clearance. Wow. So what happens is, like I said, once heat starts being generated in this area, uh, the connecting rod no longer has room to expand. Mm -hmm. So it starts welding itself to the journal. And then next thing you know, uh, it just gets too hot, it grabs the rod, throws it out. This comes flying out of your block. <laughs> All this good stuff. Wow. Mm -hmm. Judging by the color, that was probably around seven, eight hundred degrees. Mm. Jeez. Snaps the bolts. For this type of application, you know, it range anywhere from like eight to twelve thousands is acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, side clearance or any clearance really depends on the power level, uh, what your application is, and stuff like that. So if you're going with a really high boot pressure, you know, like making a thousand horsepower on this thing. You gotta have to you have to compensate the clearances for the application. So uh, for something like this, anywhere from seven eight thousand to twelve thousand is fine. Okay. So we'll start with the uh, start with the seven. And basically, so it's really loose. So we can go up to like maybe an eight or nine. All right. So that's twelve. Okay. That feels really good. What you want to do is obviously check as much as you can, you know, like uh, 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's no high spots on the connecting rod faces. I see. Like right there, it kind of binds up, you know. So yeah, like an 11 goes in there nice and smooth. Okay. So, yeah, we'll just do that with the rest of them. Okay. Simple enough. Okay, use a green one. 
Okay. That's right. Shout out to those guys, they make awesome products. Pico's race car. So we added a little red Loctite on the bolts too, just mm. so they don't uh, back up. So we have our oil pan all set up with the baffle installed. Mm -hmm. uh, all the bolts have been cleaned up. Now before we install the pan, what we're going to do is add uh, just very small dabs of R2E here on these corners where the timing cover meets the block, and then the pan will lead on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, the gasket has a hard time trying to maintain that seal there, so the RTV just helps to keep it. Uh, so we're gonna do two, you know, one on each side up here, okay. and then two on the back as well. All right. guys so the oil pan is back on the motor front cover is on and everything is looking good it's basically done at this point all we have to do now is just put the ATI balancer up front but apparently the diameter is a little bit off yeah. from what it should be I measured the snout I measured the ID of this and we got almost a three thousandths press fit Mm. Which is three thousands of press. Yeah, yeah it's all really tight. Right. If we jammed it on there. Chances are you'll never get back off. Right. So I'm gonna have to get this honed out uh, so we have proper proper fit. Right. Yeah. And this is a common issue you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah most of the time, like I said, uh, just because the part is new doesn't mean it's ready to be bolted right on. Right. Uh, most of these manufacturers make things on the small end mm -hmm. or the big end for like connection rods, let's say. Right. And then you can set the clearancing to where if it's your uh, application. Right, right. Um, so don't ever assume that you can just throw this thing on and it's done. Always measure it, check, or take it to somebody that can measure and check it for you. Mm -hmm. Like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Good tip. So many good tips. And we are essentially finished with the build. We put the oil pan back on, all the seals, gaskets, covers back on the engine and it's looking extremely pretty. I can't wait to see this thing back in my engine bag. Flashco actually went ahead and painted most of the covers. So this is painted, oil pan is nice and shiny, engine block is black. It's looking sexy as hell. I don't want to make it dirty. <laughs> We didn't do it specially for you. We like you, but this is our standard way of doing yeah, things. Yeah, no, so. awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> and Pasco got these awesome plaques made. That's his basic engine design. So I'm gonna strap that on somewhere on the engine to represent. So thanks again to Bezik Engine Design for helping with the build. I am so excited to put this back in the car, and I know it's gonna run flawlessly. So thanks again. And I probably got one more episode to go with the engine build, not these. Looking forward to it. All right, cool. It's sad that it has to end. I know. <laughs> I'll be back, of course, doing updates and uh, checking in. And also the K24 FRS Time Attack engine is also here. So I might do a video just on that back at Patch Coast. So K24 motor, K20 head. And it's gonna be supercharged and put into a Toyota. So, thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. Hit the like button if you like the video. And see you in the next episode. See you guys. Peace.